My name is Juan Flores. I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran. I uh, served in Iraq twice. Uh, I work for Operation Safety Trust. I've always wanted to join the military, um, but after 9-11, that definitely cemented that decision. Just watching the, the airplane, that second airplane at the tower, I wanted to go defend my country. I was on my way to uh, French class in high school. I was at South Broward. Um, we were in between classes, the bell rang. Um, I was walking to, to French class and then um, when we sat down, the phone rang, teacher picked up the phone, she rolled out the TV because that's how it was back then. She plugged it in and turned on the news and as soon as we, as soon as it turned on, that's, I mean, maybe five seconds afterwards, we watched the second plane hit. Because I, I wasn't even a citizen when I joined. Um, I grew up watching like Rambo movies and things like that, so I always wanted to be Rambo. Um, but as I got older and I learned more, then I, I think at that time is when I became more patriotic. I was also thankful for everything that this country provided for me. Um, you know, seeing what my cousins didn't have in Peru and seeing what I had here, I was grateful to be in this country. I think it was just always in me. I think when you know, you know. It's like it's it's uh, you're born with it. I think it's the you know it's there's a calling to it. Uh, I that happened in 2001. I didn't graduate in 2003, so it's, I had to wait. But I knew. And then um, I wanted to enlist. I didn't know if it was the Army or the Marines. And then. Uh, the recruiter for the Army showed up 15 minutes late, and so I just went to the Marine Corps. The recruiter said I was the easiest pulley he ever had. Because I signed up, I said, I don't want to do anything else. I just wanted infantry, and send me out as soon as possible. I signed up, I shipped out October 7th, and um, that was it. I graduated at the end of December, because the war had just kicked off, or the take down of Baghdad has just kicked off. They didn't, let, they didn't allow infantry Marines to go home. Every deployment since then was a build up from the next because it only got worse. You know, Haiti was, hey, look, this is how you shoot guns. And then, that, you know, Fallujah was like, hey, this is how you more tactically engage the enemy. And, you know, call for medevacs because your buddies are getting hurt. And then it was, Ramadi, where it was like, hey, maybe this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life, because no matter how good you are at your job, if it's your time to go, you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, there's no set of skills that can protect you from what's going to happen. Because the, the insurgency had a lot of influence over those cities, and those cities were also taken back by the insurgency when we pulled out. So, they were big cities. I think you just have to understand, like the terrain. I mean, Baghdad is a big city, um, but Fallujah and Ramadi were like the big cities where the insurgency was heavy, that had a heavy presence. Um, at the time, it's you know it's what you train for. I mean, this is what this is what you chose to do. This is the job that you chose to do. It's not like I was drafted into it. It's not like I didn't have a choice as to whether I was going to go be a cook or a you know a mechanic or something. This is what I chose to do, so this is what I was looking forward to. As just, you just, you know, when you see your buddies go down, is that's the part that gets you. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was bittersweet. How did you deal with those people you Um, yeah, different ways, I mean, drinking, hanging out with your buddies, um, Luckily for us, I don't know if it was because of everything that we went through. I mean, we we stayed pretty close. I mean, we have a Facebook page that we communicate frequently on. We have chat groups on our cell phones that we're, every day we're talking to one another. Um, I was fortunate enough to live in South Florida where um, a lot of my buddies that lived in like middle of nowhere in Ohio or 
so you know north jersey some place that they didn't want to live and they're like hey man can i come live with you for a little bit so i get on my feet and i was like sure so i constantly had um you know my marines with me so and you know we'd cry it out hug it out drink it out you know i mean deployments just brings the units closer you know haiti brought the senior guys like well we were the junior guys it brought us closer, and then as we go into Iraq, and the, our senior guys that we were there phase out, we get a group of new guys, and then we go to that deployment together, then we all become closer, and then as we're getting ready for Ramadi, some senior guys leave, and then we get a group, another group of guys, and we become close. War is war. Like, I mean, there's certain things that you can do to prevent it, um, when you look back, but um, I guess just try not to be a hero. You know, heroes come back in in coffins. Um, I don't, don't go. You do what you can for your Marines. You make the decision that you can make, the best decision you can make at that time. But. You can't always foresee the outcome and what's going to happen if you say, hey, make that left instead of saying, hey, make that right. Everybody I knew wanted to come back. We had a saying where every day is day one so we don't become complacent because, I mean, some of these patrols were 17-hour patrols, some of these patrols were two-hour patrols. So how do you prepare for sniper fire if you don't know the snipers there? You know, you just you think it's just another day. You're, you're doing all your checks. You're... You got all your gear on, and you just hear that pop, and then you're just looking to see and make sure your guys aren't down, because obviously you're not down, and you know you just pray the next time you hear one of those, it's not you. As time goes on and you start losing more and more guys, um, you tend to uh, believe in higher power, and just you know we used to we went from. Just like listening to music was our ritual and before we left in our truck to like, hey man, let's all say a prayer, we're all gonna come back. And when, when one of my buddies went down, he got sniper fire. And his last words were, I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. And that was the last time I saw him. Because we, we medevaced him and then after that, he didn't make it after that. He was the first loss that we took that was um, somebody that me and the guys were went through training and everything with. So the guys that we had lost before were either senior to us or they were junior to us. So we hadn't gone through boot camp or anything like that together. But this was the first one where I was like, all right, it's hitting closer to home now. Like there's no, there's, they have no mercy. There's, there's just, um, it just becomes more real when it's somebody that, you've known now for over a year versus somebody that you just met six months ago. You know, you've met their parents, you know, that kind of thing. He's from Erie, Pennsylvania. He, he lived in the sticks, so deep in the sticks that you have to, he would have to write on the, his address that, hey, like when you see the yellow mailbox, you gotta make a right and then go down 500 yards and my house is the first house on the left. Like, that's how deep in the woods this guy was. Yeah. But yeah, after that one, it was, uh, that was a tough lot. I think at the time, it was, I don't want to be close to people. Like you kind of separate yourself from people because that's what you're expecting, is to lose an ex-friend or buddy or Marine. Or, um, but then, as you get older, you realize that you want those people closer to you. I definitely, right, I, I was definitely a little colder with everyone um, during and then after, you know, I watched Camp Lejeune get smaller and smaller in my rearview mirror. That's when I was like, oh no, I need these guys close. So I kept in contact with them, I would call them, talk to each other online. You definitely have to, uh, look deep within yourself and um, one thing that helped me um, was to always think of the brain as a muscle 
because that's what I was told in high school. Your brain's a muscle. Exercise it. Go read a book, you know. Um, so one of the things that I got into was jiu-jitsu. And um, there's a, it's a small community, and they're also a close-knit community. Like, everyone knows everyone in the jiu-jitsu community. And um, to be able to go on the mats with somebody that you outweigh by 80 pounds and have them throw you around like a little kid and make you feel vulnerable again, you know, to the point where you're like, I'm not going to let him choke me out. But then you see everything closing in on you and closing in on you before you like you tap. Um, putting your, your brain in that situation where you have to think things through um, kind of opens your mind to, to like when you're at home, you're just by yourself in the room and the walls start to close in on you. I moved out when I got back. I mean, I lived with my mom for a short period of time. I don't think you're ever ready to be a dad, but you know, you give it your best shot. But I wasn't entertaining that. Um, I was like, I'll take my chances going to another unit, going back to Iraq. Yeah, I was done going back as an infantry person over there. And um, they sent me to a unit where it's more logistics to go back overseas. But um, lucky for me, the first sergeant that just took over that unit saw what I just went through and was like, hey man, if you want to go, I'll send you. If you don't want to go, you can come here and, you know, do Excel spreadsheets for me. So I was like, sure, I'll do whatever you need me to do. I just don't want to go back over, man. He was like, all right, just have a seat in that chair right there. We'll find work for you. And then at that point, that's when we found out we were having Lily. And um, they tried to get me to stay to do um, and to do be like a recruiter for the Marine Corps or go work at Quantico to train officers. So I entertained that for a little bit because, you know, they had at that point, if you're an infantry guy, they offered a lot of money for you to stay in. So I thought about it. Um, I took my time with it, though, and I made the decision not to. Well, reminding Fallujah will never leave you. That's something that when you experience that the way we did, that's never going to leave you. That'll always be with you. Now, you have to control it, you know, because you do. I don't think anyone that goes over there and, and loses their, their friends over there will ever forget those experiences. But you have to control your mind. You have to exercise that mind. Um, so it's, it's not something that happens overnight. I can't say, like, hey, yeah, as soon as I saw Lily, it was like, I changed and I became like this superhero father. Like, um, it doesn't. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen like the movies. Um, you still have to face your demons, but you have to prepare yourself in whatever way you need to to make sure that when you do face those demons, you come out on top. Um, it was mostly because I started seeing my friends take their lives after the war, after we got back. And um, I realized that's not the route that I wanted to take. You know, you start after surviving all that. And I could only imagine what they're going through in their head. And for them to say that this is enough, like I don't want to suffer anymore. And to call it quits like that is, I wasn't ready to. I wasn't ready to cash out. I think Lily played a role, for sure. I know that, that she did play a role in me wanting to stick around. Um, but I know talking, having a support system, like the friends that I had, going through everything that we went through, um, even after, like not only during it, but staying in communication with your buddies even after it and you know we do reunions every year I would go visit them once a year um, they would come down and visit me having that as a support system was probably the most beneficial along with Jiu Jitsu um, only because when they weren't around the people that I looked to for support were those guys that I was in the gym trying to choke out, you know? So 
yeah. Like once somebody gets you to the point where you're gonna black out, and then they bring you back, it's like, hey man, we're just having fun here. Yeah, they, they tend to become close friends. You know, like you typically are closer with the friends you fight with. Helping other veterans and seeing, you know, that they, they could possibly be, you know, somewhere where you were a while ago and helping them guide through that is what's rewarding. It's what keeps me moving. I would say helping veterans. That, that would, I mean, I love what I do. I mean, obviously, right? I went to school for eight years to become a chiropractor, and now... That's when we look at it. Yeah. So it's like there's... It calls to me, just like the Marine Corps did. It just feels good to help other veterans. It feels good to give back to those, you know, your brothers, your sisters, however you want to call it, to those that serve their country, regardless of, you know, what they're going through, what they've been through. Or, you know, it's great back just to get back to another better. Thank you, Michael Mars. Thank you.